this right quick. Look at the camera. Too. Right here, the chunk that to me looks promising on this big old bow tree. So I'm just going to get in here, my little trail saw, see what we got. Sometimes the sap gets it filled up. Well, that's not the greatest piece, but it's not the worst neither. You see that rich coloration in there, right? That's all that sap and resin just waiting to release its energy when you go to chunk it up. So what I would do is take my little hatchet, chunk that up into sticks, Shave some off and it starts right up. It's great stuff. It smells great. Really good. Yeah, that's it. So, I mean, it smells like pine, but it's like really like potent. So yeah, it's got a little bag here loaded up with it. Got some good stuff just walking around, pecking at stuff as we were walking. Great one. See the coloration? Fat wood, grease wood, whatever you want to call it, sap wood. Good stuff. And just a couple shavings right light light right up on you. I don't know if you can see that in the light, but that coloration is just great. Just load it up. So yeah, if you find it down pine, take a couple minutes, get a couple chunks. I'll process that up. You know, and it's great for starting fires if you're in a bad way. You know, it could be raining like crazy. And all of a sudden you got yourself a fuel source that you don't have to worry about being dried out. Whew. And we got some gathering from yesterday. Some pine sap. It's always good for glue making, but also for starting fires. Some birch bark. bunch of pine Ooh, good stuff lots of stuff to make fire making kits and a bunch of mullen too good morning so I wanted to do a little video I've been seeing a lot of stuff about fat wood gathering and collecting now I live in upstate New York and there's tons of down pine trees everywhere and most of the time you can get lucky when you're gathering fat wood. You know, you look for a chunk, you know, this isn't the greatest one, but you look for a chunk that is growing off the tree, um, off the trunk of the tree. And usually you can get, like you see that coloration in there, you know, here's a little chunk that I got yesterday. It's got, a, you know, pretty nice coloration to it. But I think for me, one of the things is that the, um, one of the things when you're trying to get a fire going, if you're in a pretty tight, rough situation, that you want to do what is going to be quickest and most sort of energy efficient. And that sometimes, you know, if you get lucky and you find a piece of that wood that's good right off the bat, you're good to go. But I just wanted to sort of compare the difference between birch bark, which, I mean, birch bark is very easy to identify. You know, you don't have the hit or miss factor that you do with trying to find fat wood. Um, and it's very visible. It's evident when you're walking through the woods if there's birch because of its coloration. And one of the big arguments for fat wood is that, well, it's waterproof and it's highly flammable. But when you, you know, get a piece of birch bark, if you get in there and you start peeling layers, you know, you're gonna find that the inside is probably pretty stinking dry um, and that you can just kind of peel chunks off and, you know, work them with your hands. And so what I'd like to do is just kind of show you the, here's some fat wood, right? And I'll just throw a couple shavings in down into my little shovel here and just kind of get it, you know. And again, when you're trying to find fat wood, one of the things you're, you're definitely gonna do is you're gonna smell it when you find it to see if it has that strong sort of turpentine sort of piney um, scent to it. You know, and you're gonna to wanna to look for the coloration too, you know, that it's got some good rosy, you know, mahogany looking color. Um, and so I'm just gonna do a couple shavings. They keep shooting away on me here. 
So here's a couple of good shavings. Get a couple in here. And kind of just do a side by side with like fat wood versus birch bark. I mean, I know fat wood burns a bit longer and so on, but if you're in a tight spot and you really need to get something going quick, see if the wind will cooperate here. So here we got a piece of fat wood going. Got a great smell, really, even when it burns. You know, and oh, wow, the wind took it out on me. But, you know, and I'm not doing anything with like bow drills or plows or, you know, anything like that. Just, you know, just quick, easy. You know, so there's a piece of fat wood going, and that's going to burn pretty stinking good. But then, sort of comparison using birch bark. Again, you know, you're going to have to rip it a little bit, but probably a heck of a lot easier than having to saw stuff or use a hatchet or whatever. So then here we go with just a little bit of birch bark. You guys can see that but i mean it tastes pretty good you know i got lucky i just found a big old chunk of it but i guess the bottom line is too is that you just want to make sure whenever you're able to have multiple ways to make a fire you know have some matches in a ziploc bag have a lighter have uh you know a striker have whatever it's always better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it um you know and even if you're gathering in the woods you know don't don't wear yourself out trying to find fat wood because if you think it's the only thing that's out there you know find some birch bark find some fat wood use them both you know make sure that you have options so that you're not basically cold wet and in the woods all right so yeah just wanted to show you a little bit of a comparison all right thanks